So I shopped my shelves and I saw that I had some parsnips that were just a little bit wilted, some garlic that's probably seen better days, potatoes that were starting to sprout, onions that I had cut up for something else and these were left over. And when I checked the freezer, I had a package of stew meat to make beef stew. So I thought this would be the perfect time to make beef stew for a nice hearty dinner. So if you ever wondered what it means to shop your shelves, it means to take a look at your refrigerator, your fridge, and your freezer and see what needs using up and then make a meal from that. And I'm going to cook this beef stew on top of the stove. So let's get that started. This video is brought to you by Apron Diva. Pretty and practical, we believe that an apron can be a homemaker's best accessory. Visit us at www.aprondiva.com. Most beef stew recipes don't include parsnips, but since I was clearing out my produce drawer, it was the perfect addition along with the carrots. And since I'm trying to move to a no-waste kitchen, I'm saving the carrot scrapings and the onion peels to help flavor the bone broth that I will make later. I've got a bag in the freezer that I'll put these in and get them out when I'm ready to make bone broth. And no, I've never learned to use a potato peeler. I've peeled potatoes and vegetables with a small paring knife since I was a girl. And no, I've never cut my fingers. I'd encourage today's homemakers to use a potato peeler, but it's not a lesson that I can teach since I don't do that myself. My dad used to tease me and say I was cutting away half the potatoes. I always give my potatoes a good scrubbing before I peel them. I don't want to transfer any dirt from the skins to the meat of the potatoes. And of course, I'll rinse the potatoes again after I've peeled them. Once the veggies are washed and peeled, I'll cut them into bite-sized pieces. That just helps cut down on the cooking time. I give the meat a good rinse and then I'm ready to work with it. I add about two tablespoons of olive oil to the pot and let that heat up while I get the meat floured. I use a brown paper bag that I had used previously to dry herbs with. This is how we did it when I was a girl and I do it the same way today. I put the flour, the salt, and the pepper in the bag, shake it up to blend it, then drop the meat in. I don't add the meat all at once, but I add it in small increments because I want to make sure I can get it coated evenly. Adding the meat all at once allows it to stick together and I don't get the coating that I prefer. I brown the meat in the hot oil and I am careful to stay on top of it. I use a spoon to keep it from sticking to the pan. Once the meat is browning nicely, I'll add in the onion and the garlic. You can always add in a bit more oil if you need to. I want the onion and the garlic to cook while the meat is browning and then I'll also add in the celery. And I keep scraping from the bottom of the pan just to make sure everything is cooking nicely, but it's not sticking. Now it's time to add in my spices. One half teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, one half teaspoon salt, one half teaspoon of paprika, and a bay leaf. And then I'll add in two cups of beef broth. Now it's time to add in the veggies, and I'll start with the carrots and the parsnips. 
and again I continuously scrape from the bottom and then I add the potatoes. Green beans are not often included in a recipe for beef stew, but I like green beans in my beef stew. It just makes it that much heartier. And then we'll add in two more cups of beef broth. We'll cover it and let it cook for about two hours, stirring intermittently. And that's important. When you cook it on top of the stove, it can stick. So you can't just fix it and forget it. You've got to check on it, stir it, and add a bit more beef broth or water if needed. Let it cook on low for about two hours until the beef is tender. And there you have it, a nice steaming pot of beef stew. All right, let's give this a taste. I want to get just a little bit of the beef, the green beans, and a little bit of the carrot. Look at that. Doesn't it look delicious? It's absolutely delicious. The beef is nice and tender. The carrots and the potatoes, the green beans are nicely cooked. It is amazing. And it'll make the perfect dinner for a Sunday or for weeknight. And we're gonna have it with some crusty bread. Let me show you. I picked up this loaf of crusty bread at Kroger. And it is called a Toscano loaf. It's an Italian style bread and it'll be nice and hearty to have with the beef stew. And it will be perfect for sopping up the beef broth. And look how thick the broth is. I didn't have to add any thickening agent to it at all. And while I'm thinking about that, let me say this. The flour that I used to coat the meat, the residual flour that was in the bag, I discarded. Let's say your broth was still kind of thin and you wanted to thick it up, so you wanted to add a little bit of flour to it to do that. You can't use that flour that you used to coat the meat with because the flour in the bag has had raw meat on it and now you've cooked all of this, but there's still some of them moisture and possibly any kind of bacteria that's been growing in that bag while it's been sitting. So you can't use that. You want to discard that. Any that's not used or not added immediately needs to be discarded. And if you want to add some more flour or cornstarch to thicken it up a little bit, you can do that later, but you want to make sure it's fresh. But this doesn't need anything added at all. For more homemaking inspiration, click on the link in the comment section and I will see you next time. And don't forget to visit us at www.aprendiva.com.